the Under Armour Project Rock BSR. Basically, the Project Rock 3's budget-friendly cousin. So three things that I like about this model is number one, obviously the price. Coming in at $100 USD, this is $40 less than the Project Rock 3. So if you do like the Project Rock model line and you are trying to save a little bit of money, this is a good budget-friendly option. The second thing that I like about this model is that the sizing is still a tad small, but compared to the Project Rock 3, this shoe fits a lot more true to size. There's no additional heel material back here pushing you forward. So in this model, you should be a lot better off going true to size or just a half size up compared to the Project Rock 3. They feel a little bit more true on the foot when training in them. The third thing that I like about this model is the overall construction. So I enjoy the booty design and the charged midsole. I think it does a pretty good job at providing you with enough support to get some recreational training in. Now I wouldn't wear these for heavier sessions per se, but you can definitely train decently heavy in them and their overall construction feeds really well into a variety of activities. So those are my three pros about this model. I think it's a great budget friendly option for those who love the Project Rock line. But now let's talk about some cons. So two potential cons I could see folks having with this model is that number one, if you are trying to train very heavy and you like having a lower heel to toe offset, this may not be the best model for you. The charge midsole does a pretty good job at supporting different loads. However, it's not gonna be my favorite model for maxing out. Plus there's an eight millimeter heel to toe offset compared to like the traditional four millimeters that we see in popular cross training shoes. The second potential con I could see folks having is that this shoe does fit slightly more narrow. Now, I think it fits way more true to size in the Project Rock 3 and overall, I thought it felt pretty true to size for my foot, but I have read other reviews from other folks who have wider feet that do mention that they feel like this shoe fits a little bit more narrow. So something to keep in mind for anybody with a wider foot that is looking at this model. For a bonus con, really fast, I'm not really a fan of the big branding here. I like subtle branding, that's just a personal thing. I didn't wanna mention that as like a major con, but just throwing that out there. Um, subtle branding is usually better for me, in my opinion, when it comes to aesthetics, but those are the cons of this model. Nothing too crazy when it comes to overall performance. It's just more so understanding why you are grabbing the shoe and the activities you want to use it for. All right, now let's chat performance of this model. I'm gonna break it into three sections like I do with all my cross training shoe reviews. So lifting, agility and plyometric focus workouts, and day to day and shorter runs. So on a lifting basis, the shoe does fairly well. Understand that it's not gonna be the most hardcore cross trainer with the lowest heel to toe offset and a very stable outsole and midsole. It does a fairly good job across the board, but it's not so far in that direction of like hardcore heavy training. But that being said, I do think you can train decently heavy in this model without much stability issues. I will say that the thicker midsole and the higher heel to toe offset may make you feel like you might not be as stable as your other cross trainers that you're probably used to. But if you are a recreational lifter and you just want a shoe that you can rock on a day-to-day -day basis and then to the gym, I think this is a great model. Plus, it is very budget friendly. Now, when it comes to plyometrics and agility work, this shoe does fairly well, honestly. I really enjoyed it for a lot of the plyos and agility focus work I did in it. The tri-base outsole does a really good job at providing you with a nice level of support, and that goes for also the lifting section too. And also the charged midsole, once again, is fairly responsive. Now I will say, with a thicker midsole and thicker outsole construction, the shoe does take a little bit to break in. It did take like three or four training sessions before I really started feeling like this shoe was molding around my foot really well, but overall when it comes to like the responsiveness and the overall fit and feel during plyo work and agility work, the shoe does a fairly good job. Now it's not gonna be once again, I think the best option for going super specific in that form of training, but if you are more of like your recreational hit athlete or somebody who likes to just plug in plyo or agility work here and there, this shoe will get the job done. Now on a day-to-day -day basis, this shoe is fairly comfortable. With the thicker midsole and the slightly higher heel to toe offset, I thought it was decent for walking around in for longer durations. You can wear this for errands, you can wear this to walk the dogs, you can wear this pretty much all day, and it's decently comfortable, assuming you have the right size. So on a shorter run basis, the shoe, once again, is okay. It's not gonna be the best for running, however, I do think that the charged midsole and the overall outsole construction, so we do have some meta splits up here at the top right up here, does feed into just your overall ability to run a little bit in this model. It's not gonna be the most comfortable ride in my opinion, but also it's not gonna be nearly as uncomfortable as some of the more like hardcore, very stable cross training options on the market. So on a longer run basis, I did not test this model for more than three miles, so I cannot speak to that point. However, I think for shorter runs and day-to-day -day wear, this model does a fairly good job. 
So across the board, it is what you'd expect for a more recreational training shoe that has a budget-friendly price. It does pretty good in all the categories, doesn't really excel at just one thing. So if you are somebody who's a bit more recreational in nature with your training and you love the Project Rock line, I think the BSR is a good option. All right, so now is the Under Armour Project Rock BSR worth it? Personally, I think if you are a recreational lifter and you are trying to save a little bit of money and you love the Project Rock line, then yes, this model is worth it. At $100 USD, that is way better than $140 for the Project Rock 3 that has a little bit of a sizing issue. So the Project Rock BSR, I like personally for a budget-friendly option for recreational lifters. I've also linked it down below, so if you are interested, check that out there. But now, let's talk about the sizing and fit. Hey guys, quick note, if you haven't already yet, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to post five to six times a week when it comes to training, shoe review, and exercise content. But back to the review. So as for the sizing and fit in this model, I've briefly touched on it already, but I think most lifters and athletes should be fairly safe going true to size. The Project Rock 3 had that weird material back here on the heel that pushed you forward, and you should size up a half size or a full size, but this model fits pretty true in my opinion. Now I will say, if you have a wider or flatter foot, then you may want to go up a half size or a full size, and I would highly recommend trying these on before you invest if you fit into that population. But overall, I think going true to size should be a safe bet in this model, and if you can't try them on, and if you wanna hedge your bets when it comes to sizing and fit, go up a half size to be safe. So we've already talked on price multiple times in this video, but once again, you can expect to pay around $100 USD for the Project Rock BSR. If you're like myself and you're a frugal son of a bitch, that's very nice compared to the $140 that the Project Rock 3 costs. So overall, pretty good budget from the option across the board, as we've already talked about. So when looking at the construction of this model, it's pretty simplistic in nature. Up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that comes up. It's in a more lipped fashion. Now I will say there is no additional material down here, so I would be careful when it comes to toe dragging activities over long durations of time for durability purposes. We have the charged cushioning midsole throughout the entirety of the shoe. We don't really have any extended outsole layers that come up, so for rope climbing, for example, you're not gonna get nearly as much grip with this material compared to like a more rubber material or a rubber outsole that wraps up. We have a mesh material throughout the upper here. We have one, two, three, four, five eyelets going up. Um, all different construction for all the eyelets. So we have a loop down here. We have two extended loops that stick out here. And then again, similar construction, that first eyelet down there. We have a booty construction. So as you can see, there is no separate tongue. We do have two loops here to pull that shoe on. Very much needed in my opinion, especially if you're sweaty. Trust me on that one. Um, on the medial and lateral side, similar outer construction. We do have a little bit of the Under Armour Project Rock branding on the lateral side. On the heel back here, we have a plastic heel counter. It does fit a little bit lower, but you can see that there is a little bit of a boot structure in here, so the boot does feel locked down. Never really any issues with heel slip. And then over here, as I mentioned in the bonus con section, some additional pretty big Project Rock branding. Making our way to the Outsole here, we have the tri-base construction. That's really nice, in my opinion, for really grounding the foot. And then overall, just very basic rubber outsole structure. We do have some grooves up here in the forefoot for reactivity, but again, it does take a little bit longer to break in because you can see how thick this material is. So overall, those are the major construction callouts for this model. If you have any other questions on this model or see anything that I missed that you want more clarity on, hit me in the comments. And that wraps up my review of the Under Armour Project Rock BSR training shoe. Overall, I think this is a pretty good model. The sizing is a bit better than the Project Rock 3, it's way more budget friendly, and it does a pretty good job across the board in a variety of activities. If you have any questions on this model, as always guys, drop them down below. And as always, drop a like to the video, drop subscribe to the channel, see you guys in the next one. So I got a comment the other day, and it was a nice comment saying that it was a great review, yada yada, but that I move my hands too much when I talk. This is what it looks like when I don't move my hands, how freaking Awkward is this? I look like a pylon. I'm just sitting here. Like, what do I do? I do this to look at the shoe? What do I do?